Look at that beautiful park. Not being used for a while though. Tigers on the road. Yesterday things got started uh, in Minnesota. All right, Miguel Cabrera, nice triple off the wall. And then Phil Coke took over. Bases loaded, walk to Joe Maurer started a busy, busy day for the bullpen that did not end well. So my question to you here in the fast five minutes. John, let's start with you. Was yesterday the last time we'll see Phil Coke in a Tigers uniform? Probably not. I think he's good for <laughs> entertainment purposes, if nothing else. I, I think uh, right now with the bullpen issues they've got, obviously he's a, a, a bit of a whipping boy, but they've got bigger fish to fry, and they've, they've just got a shortage of, of people who can get the job done right now, and I think they still think he's a lefty who can give them something. But the question is, when everybody's healthy, will he be? And I think the answer is no. We got bartender art working on some magic <laughs> What do you got going yeah. over there? Of course, I brought the, the bar set. I gave it to Tom, but Brad, this was really for you. And I just oh, want yeah? to say you're doing a great job. John and I are big fans of yours. And when you turn 21 for real, uh, <laughs> we want to take you out for your first beer. You're going right? to have to wait a while. You're going to yeah. have to well, wait. I, I, I got to graduate high school first. Yeah, either that or that's, that's a nice that's wedding a, gift. One of the two. Yeah, 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 <laughs> very nice. Uh, Phil Coke. I, I, look, I think he'd be gone already if, if he was going to be gone. I, I think they're going to give him opportunity after opportunity. I don't think they have much. And if you look at Brad Ausmus, you know, maybe it's that catcher thing. I think he has some sort of strange loyalty to Phil Coke, <laughs> and he, maybe he thinks he's going to work himself out of it. But I think it's going to have to be a major meltdown in order for him to go. And I think we've seen it, but the Tigers do. All right, we talked so much about the Red Wings, a big offseason piece of the puzzle that may be an afterthought for some. What's going to happen with the backup goalie position? Is this a, a spot where they go out and seek out maybe a high-priced veteran to go as a 1B option to Jimmy Howard Hurt? I think that they would probably like to see Gustafson come back, but I think that he's probably played his way into an opportunity of getting a, a multi-year deal and an opportunity to be a starter. So I think they're going to go out and find some veteran goalie to back up Jimmy for a year. I, I, I don't think Gustafson really needs to be back because I think everybody saw in the playoffs he does not inspire confidence. He, play, he filled in, but he doesn't inspire confidence. Peter Mrazek is the guy in Grand Rapids. He just made 55 saves and double overtime again. and won it. He's the guy who needs to be pushing Jimmy Howard and maybe the guy who is ready to take, supplant him at some point, even next season. He's the guy that I think that you bring him in. We've learned this season, don't let the young guys rot in Grand Rapids any more than they need to. Bring him up, let him thrive, and I think he's a guy who's ready to do that. Would it be but, healthy if he pushes Howard if he's up? See, I, I think that that, I, I think that the Red Wings don't want to have a goaltending controversy. Well, tough. No, no, wait, 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 just hear me out. I mean, I, I'm not saying that I wouldn't want to have one. I think we all would because it's We'd good love for it. our business. But I, I think that they want Morazak to play another year in Grand Rapids to be the starter. Jimmy's a workout horse. They don't expect him to be hurt next year. I think they're going to get a veteran in. They want Morazak for one more year. They want him to be overripe, unfortunately. Yeah. I think if Morazak comes here, I agree with John. He's, uh, he could subplant Jimmy rather quickly. You know that buzzer sounds for a reason. You can't make it on a here, guy. <laughs> no, no, no. Michigan, Michigan State losing a lot of important people the last couple weeks. Mitch McGarry, John Horford, the latest to go, although Horford didn't really mean much. But McGarry, Stauskas, Gary Harris, I mean, the names go on and on. Who is better suited to win next season, Michigan or Michigan State? I think Michigan, although the McGarry thing hurts. I, I was on here a couple weeks ago saying I thought he was gone, too. I thought everybody was going to go, including Brandon Dawson. I still think Michigan, because of John Beeline, and the way he's proven even this year that he can immediately plug in some young guys with his the way he runs that offense they don't need a big man they don't need this or that they're just going to be offensively efficient i think tom Izzo, he needs guys he, he has a harder time plugging a guy into his system than john beeline does to his i couldn't agree with john moore on this one it's not because i think we both graduate from michigan but uh, <laughs> uh I, you know I, <laughs> I, I really think it's no Marquette, though. I'll give you that. Much. I know, right, right here. Uh, yeah. Just for yeah. continuity, there's yeah, a Michigan there State mug. Yeah. Look, I love you, Tom, <laughs> yourself. I really do. I mean, I, I think you're a great a great coach, but I do think that you complicate matters by your own personality at times, and I think that there seems to be, uh, at least coming out of East Lansing, maybe you're not enjoying it as much, you know, that maybe you might look towards the NBA this year. I think John Beeline is a college coach, has a system in place, and, and I agree, you know, players – adapt to his system rather easily. Clippers owner Donald Sterling making some Ooh. interesting, terrible remarks. And I think Ernie Johnson on TNT summed it up uh, yeah. very yeah. wonderfully yeah. saying, there's no place in the NBA for Donald Sterling after making racist remarks. Art, let's start with you. What is a good enough, is there punishment that the NBA can hand out? Yeah, yeah I don't even know what to say about this because <laughs> it's so outrageous. 
uh, you would think that an NBA owner of all professional sports owner would have tolerance or at least understand the plight of African Americans, black people in the United States. Obviously he comes from a different era and time and his bigotry and his racism is just not going to go away. I don't know legally what you can actually do for a guy who owns a team. I would just say that if I were his players, even though it's the playoffs, I would boycott. I would not put on that uniform as long as he's the owner. I think that that's what you have to do. I think it's up to the players. Well, in, a, in addition to Ernie Johnson, you mentioned the guy who maybe carries a little more weight. LeBron James said there's no place for Donald Sterling in this league. That's easy to say. That is, as Art said, harder to do. You can't just take the franchise away from him. You can sort of treat him the way baseball treated Marge Schott, and I think that's what they'll try to do. But if I'm, if I'm uh, Commissioner Silver, the first thing I do is call David Stern and say, you left me with this? <laughs> this has been going on a long time. It this has. isn't news to anybody in the NBA what Donald Sterling is. That is the bigger problem, and you'll touch on that a little bit more yeah. later in the show about this entire issue. <clears throat> Last final segment, Fast Five topic, okay. Michael Pineda. <laughs> little pine tar behind the ear. It's been spoofed a little bit. Yesterday at the uh, Red Sox game, they had a gold medalist do the exact same thing right. as she threw out the first pitch. But what should baseball do with pine tar? Because it's been around forever, John. Well, you, you, you know, I'm not to sound like a normal uh, representative. Legalize it. Come on. I mean, everybody's using it. It's 80, 90 percent. Is it some of the es es estimates? Yeah, yeah. It's a good segue there. No, it, it's it's one of those <laughs> rules that everybody breaks and nobody wants. The Red Sox didn't want to call them on it because their guys are doing it too. Stop the nonsense. Just legalize it. George Brett would be happy. Everybody would be happy. Just let's let's quit the charade. Well, like Bob Marley said, legalize <laughs> it. I mean, let, let, let's. I mean, without Wait a question. Minute. Let me check. There you go. Hey, hey. Look, we know everybody does it. You know the old Charles Barkley routine. You know the old saying, "If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying." You know everybody tries to go for that competitive edge. I, I mean, Norm Cash won a batting title in 1961 with a cork back, which he showed in Sports Illustrated exactly how he corked his bat. I mean, that's, you know. Just make it legal. I mean, just, you know, the, the Instead stuff of fighting is, it, make stop, it happen. Yeah, just stop the charade, you know? Everybody does something to try to get a competitive edge. And, you know, pine tar, big deal. All right, these guys want it. You want to maybe learn a little bit more about your Michigan football team out there? Yes, Wolverine fans, you get it next. Brady Hoke goes one on one with David Solano to talk all about the interesting offseason and what's next for these Wolverines. You're watching the Suburban Ford 7 Sports Case.